Have you ever been to a restaurant that just has everything on the menu. We stopped at this one place in Nebraska on a road trip one time. It was just like a little mom and pop place, but they had everything on their menu. Enchiladas, they had burgers, they had chicken fried steak, they had eggplant parmesan, sushi, chicken fried steak, salad, and all of these dishes were listed on the same page of the menu. They weren't even like divided up or anything. Needless to say, we just ordered something very generic like a burger so we wouldn't be disappointed. Are any of those things I listed difficult to make? No, not really. We've made the majority of them in our own kitchen. But when you go to a restaurant, it's the customer's assumption that there's no way you can do all 10 of those things well at the same time and in the same kitchen. So the question is, if you want chicken parmesan, do you go to the Italian restaurant or do you go to Applebee's? I mean, no hate on Applebee's, but I can reheat a frozen dinner on my own for much cheaper. People are gonna look at your business and ask the same thing. Your business needs an identity where the customer can quickly identify you as the expert builder of one category of things. And I mean, there's room for Applebee's just like there's room for Ikea. And if you've watched the last few episodes of Maker's Money, you'll know that you want to be making luxury goods and charging a premium for them so that you can stay profitable. So how do you do that? How do you communicate your business's identity? Well, that's the topic of today's episode of Maker's Money. One of the most important rites of passage when growing up is finding out who you are, finding your identity, your likes, your dislikes, your passions, your hobbies, your tendencies, things that you're good at and things that you're bad at. All of those things work into a value system that you develop and making your actions map to your value system is the definition of being an adult. Sometimes this comes in the form of a goal or a vision of the future. Maybe you have a really great family that you picture in the future. Maybe you've got an awesome career that you want to pursue. All these things are what make up you as a person and being accountable to those goals and taking responsibility for them is what being an adult is all about. Some people never do this. They just wander aimlessly through life with no goal, no purpose. They're either people pleasers doing what everybody around them wants to do, or they're selfish people that don't ever try to help anybody else. And it takes them until they're 40, sometimes 50 years old before they have a moment of reflection and realize they're not happy with who they are. So they buy a boat or a motorcycle or something else to redefine themselves in a desperate attempt to like themselves. Wow, that got way deeper than I intended. I was just trying to make a joke about buying a motorcycle or a bike. Anyway, your business is gonna go through the same evolution. You're gonna randomly find success and sales in just a few different categories, but you really need an identity that you're happy with to draw it all in together and make it look like a cohesive business. Maybe you start out as the people-pleasing business person. You know, you're the jack of all trades. If you can think it, we can build it. Or maybe you're just so focused on just doing one type of product that nobody really wants and you're struggling to find sales. You really like building it, but nobody wants it. It won't be long until your business really needs to find an identity that it can communicate to the outside world to say, hey, if you're interested in this, I'm the guy or the girl that builds it. Cause you got bills to pay, employees to hire, customers to keep happy. You can't be bogged down with trying to find your business's identity when you're trying to stack success. Success is stacked, it's not piled. You gotta focus on doing one category of things really well so you can see more opportunities from a higher vantage point. How did you get into making things? Chances are somebody shared it with you. Whether you watched YouTube videos, you took a shop class in high school, or you spent time with your granddad, somebody had to share their experience with you so that you could learn. Running a business is the exact same way. You gotta have somebody who can show you the ropes because there is a lot to learn. We have over a hundred people willing to show you the ropes in the stud stack. The stud stack is our private community for makers who run a business. It's a place where you can share, collaborate, and grow your business with other makers just like you. Join over a hundred business owners committed to growing their business and sharing what they learn. It's a place where you can ask questions, get advice, or share your lessons to help others. We also post extra videos. We do big giveaways and we do virtual hangouts. It's a really great time. It's a paid group, so only the people who are serious about learning, sharing, and making money are in the community. It's not for everybody. We know there's free groups out there, but sometimes you get what you pay for. If you're interested, there's a link below the like button in the description. Otherwise, you can just go right to studstack.net to jump in.
All right, so to have a business identity, we need to understand what that is. So picture everything that your business makes on a stage. This is see the stage and the curtain. And this is a table, this is a chair. This is why we don't have an artwork YouTube channel. Is that a piece of brie? Yes. I'm so proud of you. Uh, this is a sign, that's a clock, just common things that we could make or most of us could make if we do woodworking. Everything you can do is on this stage. Now, if you were to turn the house lights on, you start to look like that crazy restaurant in Nebraska that had everything on the menu. Nobody really knows what you're good at. They don't know if you do tables or signs or clocks. Those all seem like very different things, even though we know that they're all pretty similar. So you've got everything outlined here on the stage and you want to bring focus to just a couple different items. So here's your spotlight. You're gonna put a spotlight on whatever it is that you want your business to be known for. For us, we want to be known for tables. We want to focus on tables long term. We literally called our business Samara Table Company. We want to be doing tables long term, but right now we're focusing all our effort and energy on cutting and charcuterie boards. It's an easy way to get our name out there to be known by our community. So you're not, you don't see a bunch of tables in our social media. You don't go to Instagram and see us putting pictures of tables up. You see charcuterie boards and cutting boards and the things that we're selling right now. Now, eventually, the spotlight's gonna move over and shine on the tables. But that's as our business identity is going to change. So think of this little stupid analogy here when you're deciding on your business identity. You just need to pick one category of things and focus your spotlight on it. Now what's the spotlight? Well, that's your website, that's your Instagram, your Facebook, really anywhere that you post information about the products that you make. It's your flyers, it's your packaging, it's anywhere that people can see what you do. And you wanna make sure that all those things are communicating the same concept, which is your identity or whatever it is that your business makes. So all of these things combined are what we call a portfolio. It's basically like a resume, but for your business because people are gonna wanna see what you do. Before they decide to go with you or make the purchase or start a custom build, they're gonna wanna see what you've built in the past. In this digital day and age, the best place to have a portfolio is your website. But if that's a little bit too complicated or maybe you don't wanna mess with web design, you can always try to use Instagram. Instagram is nice because you can add both pictures and information to complement each other on each piece that you build. The most important thing about these pictures is they need to look nice. They can't be sitting in a shop or on the floor of your garage. They need to be placed basically where they're gonna end up. So for example, if you wanna post pictures of coffee tables, bring it inside your house and stage it like you would your own coffee table and do the same thing with maybe end tables or cutting boards. Make it look nice so the customer can already see what it's gonna look like in their home. There's definitely a place to show behind the scenes. That's just not what your main portfolio is for. So bottom line, get 10 to 12 really good pictures of your main product and put those pictures everywhere. Put them on your website, on your Instagram, Facebook, business cards, flyers. You want it all to be cohesive so people know that it's you and that's what you do consistently. But I'm not really good at taking pictures. That's fine. You don't need to have a degree in photography. Your cell phone can actually take really good pictures. Just make sure you have enough light pointed at your object and Google rule of thirds. That's going to help you get really good proportions and angles on the pictures that you take. Now, you're not trapped. This doesn't mean that you can't build other things. This is just what your main focus is on. Sure, if you're focusing on cutting boards, you can still build tables in the background. It's just not gonna be advertised all over the places that your spotlight shines on. For example, we do retirement gifts sometimes. We're really not big fans of doing like gift boxes or anything like that, which is why we don't shine our spotlight on it, but we'll do them in the background if somebody asks for one. Also, your customers are gonna come to you with a ton of different ideas for things to build. They'll provide you with some variety. You don't need to come to them being the jack of all trades because believe me, the customers will come with their own ideas to you. And they're gonna be more sold on it if it's their idea than if you were the one that had to force it on them. Like Ben Ueda says, be the steakhouse, not the buffet. And you're gonna find that your business can stack success much higher than it can pile random little victories. So now you're thinking to yourself, okay, I've picked something, but if I'm gonna focus on just that, I need different tools. Cause yeah, I can do clocks, but I really need a better CNC if I'm gonna focus on just that. If I'm gonna make something my bread and butter, I need better tools because right now what I've got just isn't cutting it. So when do I buy those? 
Should I take out a loan? Should I look at used tools and try to get a good deal? What should I do when I need these tools to do my job better? Well, that's the topic of the next episode of Maker's Money. So subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when it comes out and we'll let you know all about it.